movie Ghostbusters opens nationally tomorrow, starring those two veterans of Saturday Night Live, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray. Jim Brown, our man in Hollywood, takes a look this morning at the scary evolution of movie ghosts. Hollywood has put ghosts into the movies ever since someone accidentally double exposed a roll of film and discovered that the camera does lie. Wait a minute, you can't do that to me. I know better. Scary scenes with laughter as a pressure relief valve were combined successfully over 40 years ago by Bob Hope in The Ghost Breakers. About that same time, Charles Lawton, who played a lot of meanies in his career, was a sympathetic apparition opposite Margaret O'Brien and Robert Young in The Canterville Ghost. But this kind of ghost is cinematically rather primitive compared with what special effects can do for them in the movies today. We got one! Ghostbusters is a modern version of the old-time ghost movie. So says the film's creator, co-star and co-writer Dan Aykroyd. The difference now, he points out, is that they have a little more theory, maybe a little more science, and a lot more technology. Aykroyd, along with Bill Murray and the other screenwriter, Harold Ramis, play university parapsychologists who lose their research grant and start their own business chasing ghosts, ghosts that seem to be inundating the city of New York. Their eagerness sometimes gets the upper hand, or more precisely, the trigger finger. <laughs> Successful test. Sigourney Weaver is the female lead who asks the boys for help when she can't be sure what's in her refrigerator. <laughs> Ivan Reitman produced and directed Ghostbusters. It is his fourth film following Animal House, Meatballs, and Stripes. With this movie depending on extensive special effects, Actually, Reitman conducted an interesting that. experiment. We were on a very tight schedule because Columbia wanted this film for the summertime. And um, four weeks after we finished filming, my editor Shelley Kahn and I had prepared a version of the movie with none of the special effects in, in it as yet because they, they take a long time to, to complete. And uh, we... We invited an audience of uh, two or three hundred kids in Los Angeles in, to a screening with no special effects whatsoever. I wanted to make sure that the film could stand up just based on its comedy and its storyline. You know, we had a bunch of scene missings and black and white shots with nothing going on. Uh, I made a little speech at the beginning, but they understood it and they, and they loved it. And that told me that I was on the right track. Dana! Oh! And when the special effects, along with music and sound, were added, here's what the scene looked like. dogs and the other large-scale effects for Ghostbusters were turned out by a man who knows as much as anyone about the magic of this end of the movie business. Richard Edlund's special effects roots go back to television's Twilight Zone and more recently on all three Star Wars films, Poltergeist and Raiders of the Lost Ark. The four-time Oscar winner says audiences are getting harder to fool. Well, from a critical standpoint, the 10-year-old is very hard to please if he if, if he sees a shot and there's something wrong with it whether it be a matte line or whether it be a mismatch of perspective or colors are off or or something uh, it doesn't matter what it is if there's something wrong with that shot he's going to pick it up like that and and no amount of explanation is going to get you back on the track what you've done if if, the, if that guy or that girl has seen something that they don't believe then you flunked. Special effects for their own sake are really relatively boring. And uh, that was my major contribution to the development of the script was, I said, you know, this really should be about these three guys who open up their own business. 
and uh, then let us surprise the audience by making it much more spectacular. For today, Jim Brown, NBC News, Hollywood. Always the best from Jim, always. We'll be back.